will be the first time many of them have been seen for a century. <gasps> look at the horse, look at the horse, look at the horse. He's the most famous, most studied pharaoh in history. But even today, Tutankhamun's treasures still have much to reveal. Now, the most comprehensive forensic examination of all Tutankhamun's 5,000 treasures is underway. And several key objects have captured experts' attention. At the heart of the investigation, a mysterious dagger found on Tutankhamun's mummified body. Priceless golden chariot decorations, painstakingly reconstructed after resting in fragments for three and a half thousand years. And the leather remains of a strange armored tunic. These three treasures will tell us much more about the real Tutankhamun not as a boy, but as a warrior. It's a new chapter in a story that began in the Valley of the Kings on the afternoon of November 26, 1922. In the barren desert, west of the Nile, British archeologist Howard Carter made the greatest archeological discovery of all time. the almost completely intact tomb of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, Tutankhamun. Egyptologist Dr. Chris Naunton has been given a rare chance to get up close to Howard Carter's personal account of the momentous discovery. This is Howard Carter's journal and it's Amazing for me to see this because this, it, it really is as close as you can get to the very moment that Carter looked on this incredible hall of objects for the very first time. This meticulously handwritten entry records Carter's astonishment as he peered inside the tomb, becoming the first person to gaze on its wonders for three and a half thousand years. It says, the interior of the chamber gradually loomed before one with its strange and wonderful medley of extraordinary and beautiful objects heaped upon one another. When Lord Carnarvon said to me, can you see anything? I replied to him, yes, it is wonderful. Tutankhamun's treasures captivated the world. In the months and years following their discovery, they were painstakingly excavated and transferred to the Cairo Museum. Since then, millions of visitors have marveled at many of the items found in Tutankhamun's tomb. These iconic treasures paint a picture of a pampered boy king who died tragically young. This is the Tutankhamun every school child knows, a boy too young to rule, an emotionally and physically weak puppet ruler. But this image is based on the tiny handful of Tutankhamun's treasures on display in the Cairo Museum that make up just a fraction of the 5,000 objects found in Tutankhamun's burial chamber. The rest have been locked away in the museum's basement until now. The new Grand Egyptian Museum is now gathering together all of Tutankhamun's treasures with the aim of putting the whole collection on display for the first time since their discovery in 1922. The treasures in these boxes will shed new light on the story of Tutankhamun. Thousands of objects were simply packed away when they were first unearthed and have never been studied or analyzed. But now, in the cutting edge labs and storerooms of the Grand Egyptian Museum, all this is about to change. Behind this unassuming door lies an Egyptologist's paradise. Wow. 
welcome in Storage 93, especially for artifacts of Tutankhamun. Filled with priceless treasures and dripping with gold, in this room, yes. Tutankhamun's prized possessions are being brought together to be stored and conserved in climate-controlled conditions. There's some boats, scarves, there are beds. Chris Naunton is one of a tiny handful of experts to gain entry. This is a super exciting moment to be here, to see all of this material being ready for exhibition in, in the new museum. It's once in a lifetime kind of chance to see this. The last time these treasures were together was inside Tutankhamun's tomb. Professor Salima Ikram believes it's only now, by seeing the treasures together, that Egyptologists can begin to tell the full story of the Pharaoh's life. There is so much material in the tomb of Tutankhamun. It's really a bit like an attic, where you know people's mothers have put all of their bits and pieces so that they have their memories, they have their entire life encapsulated from babyhood onwards. And Tutankhamun's tomb is like opening up his attic and being able to see inside his past life. Seen together, Tutankhamun's treasures are now painting a radical new portrait not the boy king as many had thought. This is Tutankhamun, the warrior king. Inside the tomb, Howard Carter found six chariots, seven throw sticks, four daggers, dozens of bows, hundreds of arrows, eight shields, and a unique and sophisticated set of armor. So this wasn't just a hall of treasure, it was a veritable arsenal of weapons. But these weren't the toys of a boy king. It would seem they were the weapons of a man. People romantically called Tutankhamun the boy king. And that's because he came to the throne when he was nine and a half. But he died when he was about 19. And by the age of 14 in ancient Egypt, you were a man. So really, it's more of a romantic myth calling him the boy king, because he really was a proper, truly grown up king. Today, this king's story is being rewritten by the artifacts he took to the afterlife. And there's one treasure Tutankhamun seems to have highly valued. Tucked away in a corner of the Cairo Museum lies a small dagger with a big secret. The latest technology has revealed startling new information about this weapon, soon to be moved to the Grand Egyptian Museum information that is out of this world. 